Their apocalypse was a part of their. Alice and Cecilia stood before their capital, what once upon a time were bustling streets laid silent, then prosperous, now but desolation. The sky was still dark, but first light had peeked through the clouds already, painting the eastern skies a pastel white that spread, slowly tinting the world a shade paler than it seemed. Cecilia turned her gaze up upon a lone lamplight, flickering still among the streets at daybreak. She watched it blink, flicker out, then die, as a symbolic of something. She tear her eyes away, leaving that trail of thoughts before it could grow, fester, and turn to look at Alice. The woman's eyes were unfocused. Misty, almost, as she stared into the horizon, Cecilia wished she could say it's been long since she last saw such a look upon her face. But the truth was that it's become increasingly common since the Bronze Phoenix fall, and more so when words from the other cities died. Dejected, almost at a loss, and lost. Of what, however, Cecilia couldn't tell. Shoulders slumped and a thousand-yard stare in her eyes. She wasn't smiling either. It doesn't suit her, Cecilia decided. It really doesn't. Her hand brushed up against the woman's gloved arm, a silent offer, to which she reprocated, with a loose grip and a slight squeeze. And Alice finally, finally lowered her gaze. Let's go, the woman whispered, turning to face Cecilia with a small smile that neither reached her eyes nor held any weight. Yet it crashed upon Cecilia's aching heart with a heaviness she couldn't describe. And Cecilia wondered if it would be better that she didn't smile. After all, she gripped back at the hand, feeling the lace of Alice's gloves, the only thing that remained of her usual dress, outside of the hut. That is, gone was the ostentatious gown and ornamental cape, replaced by something relatively simple, coloured grey and white, yet still very distinctively Alice. Her sword hung by her waist, as Cecilia's skiff was to her back. As they walked, they watched their city. They watched as the sky turned white and the horizon lined with gold of the sun, once again bringing some resemblance of color into this pale world. It almost looked like the morning of any other quiet town. But the shops never opened, and no one lifted their blinds. And the accumulated leaves on the ground are starting to pile up. Most of their city was automated, and functioned on independent systems. So therefore, it never quite looked abandoned. There was no sign of destruction. No. No smashed windows, nor scars of conflict. The Cetacines were never a confrontational race to begin with, and they were not about to start, not even in the midst of a form of destruction. However quiet it was, however cruel it was, it just looked too quiet, too still. Silent, but for the soft howling of winds through alleyways, it looked as though everyone had just left, moving away, yet leaving behind what was to their name, neatly scattered, a still image of eerie emptiness, a stark contrast of once and now. Pale vines crawl out from a window left open, blooming with white flowers that resembled snowdrops. 
Alice's eyes lingered on the petals. And Zizia could sense the unspoken words at the tip of her tongue, see the heaviness that waited on her shoulders, sinking its claws deeper and deeper in. The spiderweb cracks on her arms itched, but she paid them no mind, and instead looked back towards Alice, holding her gaze gently, patiently waiting for her to move on. Eventually, she did, letting the hollow smile slide back into place as she closed her eyes and turned away before gripping back at Cecilia's hand, letting herself be tucked along as they continued their way towards the suburbs. The skies are golden now, clouds painted with a pink reminiscent of Lucia's city. Pink washes over the buildings, pale white walls, rusted grey steel. A forest of concrete and glass rendered colourless. Elise danced at the hem of her dress and her cloak, circling their ankles as they walked away, away, away from their beloved city, away from what was no longer alive. Something burned in Cecilia's eyes, churning, circling, yet never spilling over, despite the dampness that now lined her lids. So this is what humans meant. She let out a shuddering breath. That you never realize how much you've loved until you've lost. Cecilia always knew that she loved their capital deeply, profoundly. She held everything and everyone close to her heart, so dear. Simultaneously, Cecilia is one not unfamiliar with the notion of loss and grief, blessed, or perhaps cursed, with the ability to be able to embrace the fragility of existence and the transience of possession. Yet this harrowing feeling in her heart still hurt. It hurt like a knife, embedded deep in her chest cavity and twisting with every beat of her heart. Still, it feels like losing something so crucial, so defining to her as a person. Gripping, suffocating, drowning. It felt like walking too far up a mountain. And even though they are walking uphill, the air is so rich, smelling of the iconic sea lavenders that decorate their streets. A scent once fond, now almost painful to inhale. Eventually, Cecilia too stopped. She turned around, letting her eyes wash over Marrow, taking it in. The streets that once thrived, the homes once filled with life. It is that silence that tore into her still tender heart and ripped it into pieces to the wind. A quiet inhale broke the silence, and Cecilia's head whipped around to look towards the souls. Alice looked over their capital, the sun in her eyes gleaming just slightly too much. When Alice let her hand go to press at her mouth, Cecilia let her. When she curled in on herself, trembling, Cecilia held her. Yet her eyes still lingered, watching the sun rise behind the skyscrapers they were once so very proud of, still so very proud of. A sob wrecked through her body, surprising even herself. Next to her, Alice slid out of her embrace, knees hitting the floor as she gripped the front of her dress, strangled wheezes leaving her mouth, hoarse, raw, pain. Cecilia reached down, 
A futile attempt to keep the other woman upright with limbs too weak. Found herself unable to close her mouth nor stop the trembling of her lips. She muffled a hiccup into the palm of her hand. Painful, too painful to ever stop herself anymore. She soon followed, falling to the ground without ever taking her eyes off the skyline. Tears finally hit the ground, staining it a darker grey. As Alice buries her face into Cecilia's chest, curled up and shaking and vulnerable, Cecilia too gripped at where her heart was, desperate. Desperate for what? However, she didn't know anymore. Come morning light, in which they cracked. And broke, like glass grounded under tires on pavement white. The sky faded to blue.